Hey everybody, this is Colleen O'Grady coming from Houston, Texas, and it's already 100% humidity. So I just kind of thought, whatever with my hair. So I just got to clear that up. I'm also sitting in my car because it feels good to pretend like I'm going somewhere. And I put on a nice shirt for y'all, but I have True Confessions yoga pants on and tennis shoes under this. So I want to encourage you today and I've been talking to a lot of teens and college students and moms and the word on the street with these teens and college students that I've heard over and over again is uh, especially one of them is she's I am stir crazy so I think we are dealing with a lot of stir crazy uh, teens and college students so this is an unprecedented time, which means it's been never done. It's unknown. All of us are winging it. We're all trying to figure it out. So I'm going to give you six guidelines for an unprecedented time. The first is it's a time to be understanding. We're, our normal has been blown up and there's a level of fear. All of us have it. Um, our teens, college students, you, kids. It's either in the forefront of our minds or in the back of our minds. And every once in a while that, even in the back of the mind, it just, boom, it's gonna come up. So you wanna be understanding because you might have fears about the stock market or your finances or your business or, oh my God, how long am I gonna have these kids in my home? Those alarms have gone off. These kids should not be in my home right now, but they are. Um, your teens are like, oh my God, I'm stuck with my parents. When can I see my friends? And they're just like ready to just climb out the windows. So, uh, so what we're going to see what's normal right now is your teens will have meltdowns. There's going to be anger outbursts. And I just want you to know that it's normal and, um, it's not personal. And I'm including you in this. You will probably have your own version of meltdown. And when you do, moms, take a break, close that door. So in this time of understanding, it's important to have check-ins. And so you could have a check-in with your family and just say with one word, how are we doing? Give me a word for today. So your team could say stir crazy, bored, you might be scared. Another follow-up question that's really good is, what do you need right now? Now they're gonna say, I wanna be with all my friends, I want 100 friends in the house, and that won't be able to happen, so you're gonna say, okay, within these limitations, what do you need? So, this is, brings us to the second guideline, which fits with the first, which is, it's a time for low expectations. So I know plenty of you want to get things right, but uh, growing up, my dad, his version, my mom wanted to get things right. My dad was, eh, it's close enough. So this is a season that it's gonna be close enough because we're all beginners, we're all learners, we don't know what we're doing. And um, so we're dealing with a lot of different things. So here's what's great about low expectations is that you're gonna be so much happier. You're gonna get along with your teens better, with your spouse better and you're gonna be less hard on yourself. And so we need that right now. Um, so I'm not saying that you don't have any expectations, but low expectations are gonna definitely be helpful. And Lamott says, expectations are resentments waiting to happen. And you wanna have low expectations in these two areas, which is home, the messy house, and school. So I would suggest, I mean, You've got kids in your house all day long, so it, you're fighting an uphill battle. But you could have in your house, I'd suggest like no mess zones. I'll say that again, no mess zones. So you'd have a space in your house that's completely clutter-free and peaceful. Um, you might want to even just, you might be bored enough to clean out that closet so every time you walk in that closet you go, ah, oh, order, that's nice. But you can't low expectations about your teen's room, towels in the bathroom, their stuff on the kitchen table. So 
low expectations will be helpful as long as you have your no mess zone. Another thing is school. I don't know what I would have done if I was supposed to homeschool my daughter. It would have been very scary. Um, and so most of you who are listening to this did not sign up to be a teacher or a homeschool person because that's not your skill set. And yet here we are and you're having to monitor your teen. So teachers are trying to figure out, moms you're trying to figure out, and your teens are. So I just, a little bit of low expectations of school. Uh, you could be, I say this to, to save you from a lot of suffering. You could get into big time fights with your teens. So this brings us to the third guideline in an unprecedented time is a time to be flexible because we don't know how this is how it actually works there's no one right way so I always with my clients I love to talk about experiments so this is not the time to be rigid like here's the way this has to be done this way no this is the time to be flexible again flexibility is will dial down the drama so the question you want to ask is is it working is it working for me is it working for the team? Is this working for our relationship? And if it's not, don't keep pushing it. Enlist your teens, talk about it, and try something different. Try it as an experiment. And just keep doing that until you find something to work. So I was talking to a girl, a college student yesterday, and um, she was studying by the pool. And someone else was studying in the kitchen and someone else was studying in a bedroom and so if that works great but it may not so then you want to keep tweaking that this is a time to tweak another place to be uh, flexible is with social media and you know this time is I mean thank God all of us are on um, media venues right now way more because we're quarantined and so thank God that teens love to communicate in social media. This is keeping them sane and grounded, and so they need that. So I think this is, again, a place where you're a little bit more lax with the social media, and again, you'll thank me because there'll be less fights. Okay, the fourth guideline in this unprecedented time is it's a time to be creative. So here's an addendum to just what I just said, which is, you want to be flexible with the social media, but you don't want that to be 24 seven. So you do still want to have media breaks. And here's why if any of you know me, I talk about downtime all the time because downtime is so needed. And so guess what? We have a lot of it now. So we don't want to um, being on social media or games or Netflix or whatever. That is not downtime because your brain is still being stimulated and downtime is having time for your brain to wander and be able to process what's going on. So with these breaks, these opportunities for downtime, your teens are not going to be real happy about that. They're going to be bored, but let them wallow. I love the word wallow. Let them wallow in their boredom because eventually they're going to get so bored they're gonna be so bored that they're gonna find something to do. So they might be doing cartwheels in the grass. They may do yoga. They may pick that guitar up that has tons of dust on it and start playing it. They might start drawing or writing or doing a story or painting or learning how to cook. They might actually wanna hang out with you and play a game. So the learn a language. So boredom, leads to creativity. So we, so boredom is good. So the fifth guideline in this unprecedented time, it's time to lean in. So what's natural for us is that we want to numb out instead of lean in. And numbing out is easy. So that's drinking a lot of wine, eating an entire bag of chips, watching 13, 14, I don't know how many, episode uh, seasons of Grey's Anatomy so that is not helpful we want to lean in because we want to anchor 
to something substantial. You cannot anchor to a bag of chips. And so we need to anchor to something because that is what will keep us stable. So we anchor to ourselves. We want to anchor to our own wisdom and our values and our perspective and our life history and our creativity. And we want to anchor to our spirituality, our faith, uh, God, the universe, the deeper or the higher ways of looking at the world. And so to anchor, we want to make sure that we we lean in to those habits that promote that. So that probably will be journaling or meditation, um, inspirational music or podcasts or uh, online services. But lean into those habits and disciplines that help you anchor to you and help you anchor to something bigger. If you don't, the chips are not going to keep you from being really afraid. So that's what we need to do. All right. So the sixth guideline in an unprecedented time is it's a time to extend grace. And grace is a combination for me that what that means that's a combination of words like um, letting things go, forgiveness, unconditional love, un, uh, unmerited favor. It's just kind of getting what we don't deserve. And a big way that we see grace is just acts of kindness. So today, um, I was going through the drive through at Starbucks. And when I got up to the counter, the woman said, uh, it's been paid for. And I said, what, what? Oh, your coffee's been paid for. And I just tears rolled down my eyes. I mean, that was, that was a little thing, but that was a huge thing for me today. It's just someone randomly paid for my coffee. So this little acts of kindness make a difference. I was on a Zoom call with like four of my friends and one of them was kind of joking around like, we're out of toilet paper at our house. And then my other friend on the Zoom call said, well, my husband's at the grocery store. And so he was able to pick her up some toilet paper and drop it out off at her front porch. And that woman's face who got the toilet paper was like super happy and excited. So it's these little things, these little acts of kindness it's extending grace to every one of your family because we'll see the best of our family and we're going to see the not the best, the worst. So you want to extend grace during those times. So again, let me review. We have, it's a time to be understanding. It's a time for low expectations. It's a time to be flexible, time to be creative. It's a time to lean in and it's a time to extend grace. So I hope that's helpful. I also, I want to let you know that um, in April next week, I'm going to be starting a Dial Down the Drama book club because I was thinking, how can I be in, like talking to you moms um, in the next two months so I can support you? So I'm going to do this book club and we will gather on Zoom and um, we'll talk about the book, but I'm going to also give you a chance to ask your questions. So if this look, sounds interesting to you, um, let me know. It's uh, not going to be for thousands of people or hundreds of people. It's going to be for a small group. So you can email me at colleen at dialdownthedrama.com. Okay, I'll talk to you later.